Hi everyone, uh, Mike here. I'm just looking after some batteries at the moment. And while I was uh, watching this battery taking on some charge, I thought, well, what if I turned this into a business? Um, how could I let people know about it? Well, maybe I'd start a social media page, like a Facebook page, or um, a, a website, and then uh, hope that people contact me. And they could contact me by ringing me or sending me an email. Maybe I'm not able to answer the phone call straight away. Maybe I can't answer the email straight away. Um, I might have a contact form on, on my website. And similarly, I might not be able to respond straight away. So wouldn't it be great if I could have some kind of automation that at least sent them a, um, a reply acknowledging that they've made an inquiry and saying I'll get back to them pretty quickly and that that kind of automation is sometimes referred to as a very simple funnel on a website and that made me think about the word funnels I don't think that that word is particularly useful but that's what's um, in use at the moment in uh, website marketing online marketing funnels and also you know managing customers and things well what, what do you do about um, taking care of uh, inquiries and taking care of um, uh, people who are already your clients, whatever they might be doing. They might be doing a course or they might be, um, you know, preparing for a webinar. Uh, they might even be part of your team, a distributed team, like in a franchise. How do you take care of people in a way that um, allows you to use automation um, so that you're free to work on your own business as well as showing care for other people? So, uh, I, you know, as you may know, I've started uh, building um, marketing funnels and looking at different ways of doing that easily for small business. So let, let's look at uh, um, uh, another example. Um, let's think about that contact form that most people have on a website. What happens when someone fills that out? At the very least, the, the software behind that contact form would be putting people into a list so that... Um, you get home later on to, uh, during the day or in the evening, you can go through all the inquiries and then the next day you can follow them up. Yeah. So, um, so that's, that's a, a fairly easily understood, a very common situation. But what if you could do something a little bit more sophisticated? Um, so again, you can, you can have uh, the software, maybe as part of the form or as part of your um, customer resource management tool that you may have installed, sending a, um, a, a nicely tailored follow-up message, um, giving them some initial information that you might, um, you might uh, presume that they're, um, that's in line with their inquiry. But then we can get even more um, clever with this and, and uh, tailored. So imagine if that contact form had a number of options, option A, B, and C. Maybe there, there are different services that you, you provide or different products that they, or maybe categories of products that they, they might be interested in. And um, the automation behind the form might look at those options and the, the response, the, the automated response, is tailored for those uh, choices. So if, um, if someone is selling... Um, different items of clothing, then, okay, shirts uh, might uh, generate a, a different kind of response than uh, shoes, for example, or accessories. Um, and that's possible. So we're starting to get a little bit more sophisticated in the handling of that initial inquiry. We can do other things as well. We can uh, motivate people to fill that contact form out with um, uh, some kind of um, incentive. And in marketing speak, that is referred to as a lead magnet. Um, so uh, next to the contact form, or maybe just above it or around it, or part of that page, you're, you're offering something. Something of value to them. Um, something that's not going to break your own bank. Um, something that is unique to you and your service. And um, you offer that to them in exchange for them filling out this contact form and maybe taking a, a couple of those options. And that's, uh, that's referred to as a lead magnet. Uh, magnet, attracting people, 
in order to generate leads, which you then can follow up. And imagine if uh, someone did uh, fill that form out and um, what happens just after that really lends itself to, uh, to, to automation. You don't need to get involved in that. So, so they fill out the form, um, the software um, acknowledges that and then asks them to confirm their email address because there are legal requirements to do so for privacy sake and all of that before you start um, uh, communicating with them. Um, so that step itself can be automated and um, and then once they all, uh, once they confirm their email address, then you know the, st the next step of sending them that um, that promised incentive, that reward, uh, can be automated as well. So you don't need to get involved in that. But at the same time, you are building your list, which you can then follow up. And we'll talk about that follow up in a minute. So there's a lot of this that can be automated and uh, that allows you to get on with your business. In my case, looking after batteries and other things, obviously. Um, so, um, yeah, so automation can take care of some of the, um, the, the steps that lend themselves to automation and that provides a more immediate response for your customers and clients and they feel good about that. I mean, they know that it's, it's automation, it's obvious that it is, but they still appreciate being contacted. It's like when you press the button on a screen and you see a response straight away. You know that's automated, but it makes you feel like the system is responsive to you. Okay, and the next step then, so you've got that person's email address and uh, you've delivered that, uh, that promised a reward in, in response for that, you, you then need to process their, um, their actual inquiry if they've made one. Um, so you do that. And then uh, you, uh, you want to make sure that you follow that basic business principle. It's easier to keep a customer than to find a new one. So that, that person now is already a client of yours. They're already placing their trust in you. And so uh, the next thing would be to uh, keep in contact with them. Um, on a regular basis, and that again lets, lends itself to automation. So you could have, you know, um, um, maybe even just email messages that you that you use, maybe write in advance, just to keep in touch with people every three weeks, every four weeks. So that's a um, nurturing funnel, uh, looking after people. Um, what I was talking about before was a lead generation funnel or a lead magnet funnel. And uh, this one's a nurturing funnel. And you can use nurturing funnels for um, in a number of contexts. So just simply keeping tabs or in contact with people who have done business with you in the past. And they maybe over, over time, those, those leads might get progressively cooler and cooler. Um, so you might want to put a time limit on the end of that. Or uh, they may be people who are actively your clients. So, for example, if you're running courses, there are people who are already on your courses. Um, and, um, and you can use a nurturing funnel to look after people who are progressing through a course. Because as we all know, it's hard work doing self-based study. And it's just nice to get some kind of um, um, indication that someone's watching you and watching over you uh, while you're struggling through that. Uh, that path. <laughs> I can hear this battery bubbling as it's being charged. It's being nurtured by this uh, this battery charger. This is a kind of like a nurturing, um, like a day spa for uh, for batteries. I think um, people like to be looked after as well. So anyway. Um, I've been posting a little bit about marketing funnels and in return, it's on social media, and in, and in return, obviously, I'm getting a lot of uh, advertising in my social media feeds now about uh, marketing funnels and and, um, and I noticed that uh, they've got a few things in common. They're, they're employing the, the, um, the principles of lead generation themselves. You can see that. Uh, some people get a bit jaded because they understand the process going on behind. But, you know, everyone's trying to feed their family. So for me, I have learned now how to build marketing funnels inside the most common uh, content management system for small business, with WordPress. 
a lot of businesses have been using um, HubSpot and um, MailChimp, uh, those kinds of online mail delivery platforms um, to build funnels. And uh, some really good friends of mine also use uh, Facebook Messenger to build funnels, a, a chatbot, um, for example. So, um, but what I've been doing is learning how to do it inside WordPress. What this means for me and my little little small uh, group of businesses, I I, I, um, I build websites for people. I, uh, <laughs> I look after people's batteries. Um, I, I teach people to dance as well. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, that that um, that I have, have done to turn, I suppose, hobbies into forms of income. And I think I think a lot of us are looking for ways to do that. Um, but we all still need to make people aware of our service and we also need to manage inquiries and we also need um, systems in place to keep our customers and clients happy. I'm also a teacher at heart and if, um, if, I, uh, if I like doing something, I also like showing other people how to do it. So in business, as far as these marketing funnels are concerned, I can show you how to do it on your website um, or uh, I can do it for you as a service. Anyway, um, if you'd like to learn more, uh, make contact um, and, uh, and I'll get back to you or my automation initially, but I will certainly get back to you. Thanks.